So, but I do want to talk about Gwent. So, uh, we the the everything is working with the tournament client, which is love to see it. Uh, so JSN takes Pincer Maneuver, and Camelic takes a, the red coin list here, which is the cell phone list. Makes perfect sense. camelic has got to be really happy to see having both Tempest and Portal in hand. That's really great. Be able to do some of that that really delicious round one thinning. Um, the only caveat here for Camelac is that man, this is a gold heavy hand for the for the red coin. So we might see, but a lot of good stuff there. So we might see the push. My love, why are you screaming at me? Why has make scream? Hey. Oh, he's feeling he's feeling fighty today. Yeah, that's my son. Uh, so we see JSN use a leader charge right off the bat um, with a pre with one of the priestesses uh, just to make sure that it gets a boost on it with the Istrid interaction. So that's awesome. I've resold my soul to Elden Ring. Yeah, they're doing a new DLC, right? Yeah, and I think they I saw the DLCs an extra like 30 or so hours of content, 20 or 30 hours of content, so yeah. Love to see it. Uh speaking of, we see so we see Camelek uh take the care trolled uh, presumably to threaten the Istrid. So we might see the snowdrop, either the snowdrop now or maybe just a um just a siege engine because of the double siege masters in hand. Essentially, just to try to maximize this history value, because I think JSN's probably got a click here. Okay, so we see him commit the snowdrop. Presumably, we send back the Renfries gang and, and the Onager. Yep, and then we get the clicks. Uh, you never want to see Vernon Roach here, because obviously you're just giving points to your opponent because it boosts the Roach because of the Istrid. So these are these are all pretty pretty bad draws in the end for uh for JSN um you would lo you would have loved to have seen w either obviously any of the priestesses to boost those you would have liked to have seen the, uh, the other onager to boost it didn't get didn't get any of those and instead it's going to end up giving the opponent a point on the Vernon Roach not the end of the world but not not exactly what you're looking for uh there is currently 6 damage represented on the board for Camelic um so Team France uh, on the opposing court can remove the Istrid here. Can also remove the Snowdrop. Okay, so chooses to remove the Istrid. Makes sense. Could have also killed the Snowdrop with Olgear plus Raiders. Uh, given the hands, this Radovid goes through unless Canute gets played here. And then it's Canute. Canute on Olgear plus Raider Click kills the Radovid because obviously leader charges uh, with this list are worth a lot more points than they are in other instances because it's not just consistency, but every leader charge is also hand fixing and of course carry over on the priestesses with the charges. So, and as we know from many of the trash metas we've had that have been dominated by the the um, Northern Realms Priestess deck. Every one of the priestess charges is worth a lot more than one point. That's yep. So we do see that it's expensive, but Kamalik uh, plays the Nutter, and now is starting to begin to threaten to win on even. JSN is probably going to go look for damage here to kill Canute, turn off the, or a lock, finds an assassination, so Canute will die. Goodbye. Oh, and JSN still got plenty of both tempo and value here, right? Um, when he plays the Siege Machine, plays the Siege Engine, he'll draw two cards, so it's an extra four points on the Snowdrop. Still got 13 points to thin out the Renfries gang. We see Camelot opt to use the Tempest now to thin. And opts to spread it across both decks, so is assuming to lose points on... The, the front row, but instead of stacking all of it on the back row. But that makes sense because not not sure how much longer Camelot's going to play in here. You could play Portal and then Mata 
You could also play, like, you could be convinced to play Portal, Marjoram, Mata, you could play, you could maybe play the Vildkarl, like, there's some different stuff you can do here for Camelot, but... There's a, there's a point here, because it's like, if you, if you end up either getting pushed or in a long round, like, what... Then it become then it becomes an issue of what are what are you gonna play right? If you lose this round, losing the care trolled, um, playing double dwim and losing access to care trolled feels really bad, right? You end up with two five five provision cards that don't do anything. So if you're Camelec, yeah, I think you you continue to to push the issue here. What is the Mata getting? It's getting Draco Turtle at 10, right? Yeah. Or, yeah, it's either getting Draco Turtle or Small Blood Totem. A pleasure to you. But JSN's got the hand here to not not get pushed. pushed. My graphics is on minimum BG3 requirements. Is it possible to enjoy or should I upgrade? So, I, I, I can tell you that at least for act one and two you'll be fine uh to my understanding it's not it's not really graphics intensive like you, you might not get like the full beauty of the rendering of uh of in-game play the cutscenes will, should still be good for you but act three is where things get dodgy depending if your machine isn't built to handle it because the problem becomes that there's so many more npcs and so much more structure that has to load in because of the city of Baldur's Gate being so much bigger than the other acts, um, it slows down your machine. Uh, speaking of uh, of jamming, um, so we see Camelic like, jam Svalblood here as well. So JSN has some has a couple of options, uh, a leader charge here to continue to play into the round and maybe you try and you try and get out with maybe you let these the sunset warrior come out because you want to hold on to at least one leader charge so you i don't think you want to play the ren free this round if you can avoid it yep so we see we see now taking a, a Griffin Witcher mentor on adrenaline to be able to hand fix. It also continues to grow the snowdrop because there is no answer here for the snowdrop. I was wondering about whether or not it was better to kill Snowdrop or Istrid. But again, I don't think JSN is particularly concerned here. So we now see we see full leader from Kamalek. But I think that's, unless I'm missing something, yeah, they're not going to be able to activate the Svalblood again. The Mata is either pulling a totem, well, that's not true. I guess if you Mata, yeah, you can't do this though. So you'll if you Mata and then after that you were to play the totem, but then you need to click and play another card. To my lady. And you, I don't think you can also play the Sigvald here either. So yeah, so JSN just chilling, right? Yeah, I think I think the idea for Camelec was to be able then to 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 push round two, and then you try to like, you know, you try to short round three with some cheese. But this this is just tough because as it always is, because if the priestesses get a lot of charges on them. And if you can't get last say, la last card Vernon Roach. If you if you structure your hand properly, the you know the Onager Priestess interaction, Onager Tritum interaction. It's just it's a lot, and especially if you pull playing the Rune Mage to guarantee to try and guarantee Sloth on Renfrey, you can play. You know you play your bronzes last. You play a bunch of cards last turn, and they all feed off of each other. It's a it's a bit of a nightmare. Uh, my my rig is running the minimum two played start to finish and the game runs smoothly. They optim yeah yeah it's it's I think it's as well optimized as you can have. Um, I think that B BG three optimized as well as you can for the sheer volume of stuff that's in the game. So I I agree with uh, 
with Rev Winged on this. We see the final leader charge here for a Griffin Witcher, a mentor. Be yourself, only better. So the mentor now gets played. Both of these cards presumably go back, and then you just jam the Ren free if you need to. So up 14. Um, Camelex only getting another four points. On the portal draw, six if it's a Corsair, seven if it's an Adept, but that's that's in a turn from now, so now if you play Mata. I mean if you if you play Mata, you're just trading the card, right? You're just trading Mata for you're you're just trading your card for for the Renfrey. And that's not that's not a good trade. Yeah. So Camel like ops to pass. Like it's not trading anything because you JSN wants to jam the rent free at some point anyway. So So Sigdrifa's right is still there, but JS uh Camelek playing the portal so late also denied himself the thinning, and then of course, as expected, we see one of those cards that might have thinned off of the portal come back. Both Priestesses currently have five charges. Curse of Sloth did get pulled. Boost by four. Uh, so ended up taking Sloth and then boost by four on pass. This is actually really great for JSN because 10 points is not easy for Camelec to do in this, in one card uh, in this board state. And in fact, We know that he can't. So, a couple of things here. Drawing it into both Priestesses is really great for JSN because now you can mulligan them uh, for the extra value, which is awesome. If you uh, if you are JSN, if you're kind of like, it's not gonna it's not gonna be awesome. Color me tickled. We see the leader played here, so JSN smells weakness. Uh, finds Xavier Lamans and assumedly takes out Knutter. Yeah, so Knut's gone, which makes the Sigvald a lot worse. Camelek will have one of the Dwims not be dead, which is good for them. So that's something. But now, now you can just keep going through the graveyard here. I think probably Svalblood is the next thing to die. Uh, you could also conceivably pass here, I think, as, as JSN, although it would be weird to, to play the Sloth and then just to pass, especially with the Onager on the board. So we might get one of the two Priestesses here from JSN just because it's a 15-point play. Floats the margarita. Interesting. Without clicking Xavier Lemons. What? Why, why not click the lemons and kill a 12 or the not? What? I don't understand. I don't, I don't understand. I am not an understander. What? I mean, but he didn't... JSN didn't rope out. Also, now... Now, I mean, now you're just given points back here. What? Did I miss something? Did he Did he rope? Maybe he rope. What the... What? Now decides to go kill something in the graveyard. I mean, it's it's 28 points, but there's six, eight. You also gave a bunch of points back to Svalblood because this is five. Three, this plays for double points on the Sig Vault. Well, the Sig Vault got played late, so the Sig Vault won't get clicked. So I, I think it's a two, I think it's a 2-0. 
So JSN, JSN stumbles into a 2-0 here, um, because I, I don't know, I don't, I don't know what just happened, but the the players ramped up jamming the cards there. Um, Kamalek was trying to hold on to the Sigvald, so you know, tracking why that didn't get played earlier. Also, you end up with two, two of your last three cards have order abilities. All right, and we are back at it, uh, seeing the same same decks, same coins as Kamalek was kind enough uh, with um, JSN's PC crash to allow for a replay of the institutionals. Um, um so far, okay. So JSN has a very similar hand to round one. Uh, access to the operator. One Flutter in hand, a Witch Apprentice, uh, no Necarat in this hand for JSN. And in round one especially, that can be big, so that's a huge difference between round one and round two. Also, you don't want the last wish yet. So, uh, JSN, the hand, not as good, but we should see the Operator, Leader, Click, kind of standard round uh, round one, turn one play here from, uh, from the Vamps player. Hey! Hi! Yes, come say hi. Yeah, good boy. Go lay down. Take a load off. Stop crying. Uh, we again see the tax collector. Love to see it. Brings me back to the good old days. We see double tax collector. Double tax collector would make H and A really spicy here, but uh, but no TR. No. No here and the daily uh, here for Kamalek does still have uh, Horson, which allows him, uh, which allows Kamalek to take care of one of the buffooneries. I admit that I was also expecting a spend there to kill the Necarat, but now there will be no killing of the Necarat that way as Ripti Lord Riptic comes down and uh, kills Horson. We see the sewer raiders thin. Um, Kamalek doesn't have access to the madam thinning either, which is not great for them. They don't have the Saul in this round. But we, again, similar to round one, we see the bronzes played out here that'll be good for the tome later from JSN. Yeah, I always, I always, it's, it's a, I, it's an old militarism. I always yell at my cat. He comes in and meows at me just to let me know he's here, and I just yell, "Go stop crying." Like an old salty British lady. Uh, but this 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 essentially this essentially goes kind of the way that we thought it would, regardless. Which is JSN's going to win on even here. Going to be more expensive. I'm surprised. I admit that I'm kind of surprised that this this proto flutter was not instead a maxi because clearly, yeah, Camelic passes here. So a full bank for Camelic is nice. Kept the Novograd click as well, so the Novograd carryover thinned. Um, so, Kamalek doesn't get too owed, but particularly with the Novograd on board, but it's this is this is going to be a hard road to pull. Uh, lock and purify in hand for JSN. Uh, double. Double, yeah, I was say double incubus is not great, so ops to just take the long round and not play into the Novigrad either. I forgot that with Novigrad that there is a possibility that you could pull a sewer rat and do the kind of the same thing that happens with um, Mahakam Pass, where you can get three three of them of the dwarves. It's kind of funny. Um, still no Kekker. Still no Kekker. Oof, Bapo. All right, so last last Mulligan JSN finds the Kekker. Kamalek opens by putting a failed experiment on the board to float the poison. We see the uh, insta lock from JSN to prevent the one turn poison. This should be Madam. 
So, I mean, Madam, Yago, Heatwave, and, and Saul is pretty solid here for Kamalek, but the Heatwave just gets a lot worse now. Um, conceivably, you could resolve a poison um, on it if you really had, if you were pressed. But we see the we see the Kecker pulls the Maxi, which sucks. You really would prefer that to be uh, a uh, a bronze unit with the with the tome going to be on board. Well, m well. You'd prefer it to be a bronze unit because your bronzes are engines here more than anything. Because obviously the tome comes down at the end, so you don't get the tome value. So the tome will come first, then the last wish, which then means double witch apprentice. And that's four points a turn. Now, that being said, Kamala got a lot of points because of the jackpot leader... Um, whenever the opponent plays a card, gain a coin, plus the Sly Seductor. So, I mean, all of these cards that just got played added value for Kamalek, but four points a turn is a lot. So, we see a full spend here. Uh, presumably for the Yago. And then you get the coins back, so that what... The, the defender and or engine may die here if the bare knuckle brawler wants to party no okay so we just see the we just see the clicks because of the yago uh interaction there i mean massive points there it's what is that 34 points give or take minus the armor here right uh well no it's not 34 it's 25 but there were nine coins in the bank so that 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 turn was was 30 odd points but we now see double flutter still protected by this doofender ah, I, I rhymed imagine being a maker of lyrical poetry <laughs> it's me you didn't expect it frankly neither did I or anyone that knows me um, the 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 pulling the strings takes the defender here, right? Yeah. That is huge for Kamalek because that that opens a line for the heat wave, but double last say is going to be a tough thing to get around here. Uh, we could also see the Verena now, now that the defender is gone. Maybe you see the Verena. Yeah, there's the Verena. Yeah, missing the Necarat because double, to your point, double Necarat is really nice. Really, really nice. Because it allows you with the with the Verena, it makes the Verena so much more scary because then you're putting, you know, you can continue to put bleeding and deny boost on the units. And just like that, I mean, JSN is is with uh, now. Granted, there's a heat wave here, so you know one of these one of these presumably flutters, given what's left, are not going to live. Interesting. So the Verena, we see the Verena die there. So Kamalek is more was more concerned about the Verena uh, blocking all of the boosting than than the raw points. I mean, you're still talking about four points a turn. Uh, it's seven... Uh, it's at least eight, nine points a turn here. Yeah, that's the end of that. Yeah, I was going to say, now the Oriana comes down for massive points, even without the Necarats. Um, this is, as chat pointed out, this is just such a tough matchup for Syndicate to get around. So, JSN from Blue Coin. Uh, is attempting to seal the deal here with Nature's Gift. We see Kamalek again take uh, the SK cell phone list that's fairly uh, red coin liking. Uh, Tempest in hand and unbricked for Kamalek is good. No portal. Uh, it does have a playable hand though. A lot of junk. 
And we see JSN jam a uh, sorceress that ke that he knows is inc is very hard for Camelot to deal with, so jams a sork to start. Uh, looks like JSN JSN might try to get out of this round without playing Ukwin, and that would be bad for Camelot. Although JSN does play into Tempest here by splitting Rose, not sure why. Hey, I'm not sure why. Moshcraft. Can't believe somebody else has got buffed. Yeah, it was weird. There was nothing wrong with it, and it got buffed. Like, uh, meaning there was nothing... It wasn't deficient, and it was winning games and competitive, and I... I also don't know how, uh, Mosh, I missed your previous message. Good to see you, my friend. Happy Catterday. I know that you also, as a, as a cat dad, love when uh, Catterday lines up with your cat actually paying attention to you. So again... Oddly, JSN plays into uh, the Tempest. Doesn't really matter here. We see the rebuke just played here for value. But, but, I say that. You know, I say that it didn't matter, but... Kamalek has a bunch of trash in hand and, like, can continue to play the garbage. And if you can stay just kind of close enough, JSN's gonna have to start giving up good cards here, right? Like, you still have a Pawn Keeper to play, sure. But, like, you don't really want to have to play one of your consistency cards here and especially sleep around, do you? He paid me so much attention. He oh! My fucking... My idiot love child woke me up at uh, at 6.15, even though we went to bed late last night, um, because it started raining this morning. Makes me want to throw him in the ocean. Yeah, let's get some mellow, mellow vibes. Yeah, that's better. So now we see, now we see the big, the big, uh, the big swagoo here. Yeah, we see the... So, it's a shame for JSN because, yes, you get to keep Aquin, but Aquin plus Tempest is so many points. But this this now puts it out of reach for Kamalek. Um, yeah, can't possibly play a card here. So, JSN, it's expensive, to be sure, having to play the Call of the Forest into the Fauve, into the Fauve, to, uh, to pull the Tempest, like, to do all of that. But, that being said, you kept Aquin. And oftentimes, Symbiosis jams up when, you know, round one off and turn one kind of thing, but, um... Okay. Decent hand for JSN. A uh, very playable hand as well for Camelex, so both, both players... Yeah, definitely both players have a playable hand. And now we see, you know, what, what would normally be more of like a round one played all over again. So we see the turn one Aquin. <laughs> Do not make me beg. It's gonna take a minute, given uh, Camelak's hand, it's gonna take a minute to deal with the Aquin. So there's a couple of things here. We see some we see the setup of the symbiosis with the back row pawn keeper. Now we should see Care Trolled. And we do from Camelak to set up the damage. But the deed is done here. Aquin's gonna have done her job because we could see. I mean, if you're JSN and you want to like jam the cards, you could Simless here, which I think is is wild and exotic. But you've still got you've got like a pawn keeper you can randomly play, or you can jam the Simless. So we're gonna see the jam of the Simless. I'm kind of surprised here because of the lack of heat wave in this list not buffing the Aquin. That was surprising to me because if you buff, buff the Aquin to 15, the only way it gets dealt with is spores and then care trolled, right? But now it just gets resolved just with the care trolled, doesn't it? Uh, so, Tom, um, JSN's computer crashed, and Kamalek was kind enough in Game 2 to offer a replay, so they, they replayed the cards. Surprisingly, um, 
Kamalek continues to give up points per turn with Yuckwin. Maybe not concerned about about the going wide because of the Svalblood. So we see Kamalek still playing it slow here, down 30-odd points, but there's a lot of things on this side of the board that are going to start point-generating here presently. We see the Philavandral here into the Moonstone, the Runestone, I would imagine. Okay, just opts to, opts to make the Small Blood worse with a Rebuke instead of taking the extra points on the Uquin. Yeah, but being able to... You are exactly correct, Mosh, but being able to remove the um, uh, the two Fanatics here certainly helps uh, JSN's cause. We see the heat wave on the Draco Turtle. We could see, like, Sigvald here or something. Again, something Kamalek holding back. Yeah, holds back and, and is waiting because wants the small blood to live. Doesn't know, but could assume that the Eskel's in hand. So, JSN is currently up, has another four, is, 30, is up 38 points. Let's see what Svalblood does. Oh no, that's so funny. Camelek, so all of that, Camelek also had to click because wasn't ahead after all of that. But I mean, JSN got, got what he wanted out of this, right? So I mean, I, I guess you could Eskel the Sigvald here. But there's still, there's still, this interaction is still two. Two sixes, eight. Four points here. So it looks like JSN is considering maybe like Eskel full leader or something to try and force out the last two cards. Okay, we see one leader charge. So yeah. I think it's gonna take it'll take the Sigdriffa either onto the Sigvold or a Fanatic. So okay, so the Sigvold is enough. Okay. So JSN does get both cards. Um Portal, Nutter, Immortal, and Vildkarl, although it'll be you'll need both you'll need um Canute and you'll need Canute in hand, which he has in in or uh, well, that's not true. With the totem on board, I guess you can you can activate the Vilcarl if you play it early enough. No Sigdrifa is huge. He should have clashed instead of leadering. Yeah, I, I think was he was. It looks like he was trying to work through the math on that, but I think you're right. Uh, you take a Mulligan here to on the Herald to take the Isengrim for the extra points, don't you? Okay, instead opts to, uh... To now Isengrim the Hamadryad. Okay. Keeps it alive. Well, it doesn't... It, in an attempt to keep it alive, but it's not It's not gonna live, because now you can care trolled clash with Ogier to Mortal. Herald is 15. The Nature's Rebuke is, what, 6? I think JSN is probably trying to work out the math of, like, do I need to... Should I put the Vitality somewhere else would be the, the consideration. Well, that solves that problem. So Kamalek cleans that up. 
has another that's what 13 points and I think Camelec takes this right because this is seven seven plus four that's so 11 and Gordo is only yeah Gordo's only only 15 Wow whoo I caramba Wow, wow, wow. So Camelic takes uh, from red coin with a red coin deck, uh, to be sure, but takes round uh, takes round three against a uh, blue coin list that was on blue coin. So that, that ain't not nothing. All right, so now we see Camelic on the blue coin with the uh, with this Reaver, Reaver Hunter, Crimped Reavers shenanery. Uh, this Kecker list, uh, and then JSN opts to take uh, opts to take the same list uh, symbiosis list back into it. Mostly because he doesn't have a choice, because that's the only deck that's left. That's how best of fives work. Told you guys, today's gonna be a weird one for me. Brains feel a little fuzzy. We're gonna make it through, chat. We have Moshcraft and Entropy and smart people here, so they'll they'll help me carry the water. A very thirst trap question of the day. What is one of oh no, I'm not reading that out loud on chat. Nope. So we do see the more traditional, especially from Red Coin, makes more makes a lot of sense. JSN uh, with the Ukben. Um, Camelec tests to see if there is a Dryad's Caress in hand or if it's going to need to be burning like a Fauv for it, and it looks like Fauv is happening. Entropy in the same category as me. I mean, Mosh, uh, is there anyone in the last 24 months that has more time, more hours in Gwent than you? That's got to mean something, right? That's not nothing. There we go. I was way too bright just now. I was hurting my own feelings. Camelec with another lock. Super funny. L O L O L. Um, ironically, JSN, yeah, can find can find another Dryad's caress off of the sorceress. So there's that. Um Camelec also hasn't gotten to do any mutagenerator buffing. Uh, deck buffing thus far, and also hasn't set up any, done any crimped reaver setup, so. You would think, and yet forever, Papega. I wonder if before, like, hopefully it's years from now, but I wonder if before, like, Gwent, Gwent goes offline, I wonder if we, we can get all the, all the old heads back together, we get, you know, Trinet and, and Bushy, um, And um, and M and all the we get all the cool kids to come back out of the woodwork and do like a and do like a you know like a top a, like a six, top or um, like a sixty four player streamer tournament or some shit like that that'd be fun. The more time you spend on Gwent, the dimmer you get. That is that is that is true. I should the more the longer my stream goes, I should turn the lights down increasingly, right? Uh, meanwhile. I was uh, I was dreaming about a future state, and uh, so the Sork pulled a circle of life. No, obviously no, I, I assume, no Dryad's Caress to unlock Uquin, and now we see that the five point the five points a turn on the Muta Generator front row, plus the four points a turn on the Reaver Hunter is starting to do its work. Uh, did he find the mo was there a movement piece uh, PJ I didn't see it while I was postulating about the nature of the world JSN signaling here uh, going all six rows or all all six turns front row signaling um, a desire to stay in this 
Yeah, buffing the. I, I guess it's. I'm on red coin. I'd rather buff the fill of Andrel than 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 like have to warmonger this round. But the pressure is still on. Camelek is still ahead here because the fog will damage armor. No good, no good boosted Treant targets for the Pawn Keeper to go front row, so opts to play it back row. I was gonna say the Mata is actually is is a nice card here for JSN because it gives JSN another card to play. So as presumably that circle could kill this. Uh, well, this Reaver Hunter will die to the fog. I mean, you probably want to play it for positive points, so I don't think that you take this off in exchange for hoping to fog it in two turns. Well, we do see we do see the one that was going to die anyway to the fog die die instead, so that the uh, presumably so that the selection could be made on Circle of Life to choose the unit in hand. So now this Philavandrel is pretty beefy. It's a nine power Philavandrel. The wagon plays for a lot more points because of the muta generator, so that's a cute, that's a cute muta generator interaction in a nice way with the uh, provisional changes to uh, to play that out. So a close one to be sure. Um, some decent hand buff, to be honest. Some 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 fairly good hand buff for Camelek. Um, plenty of carry over here uh, with the, the wagon in hand was able to play the Mata to guarantee the Kekker in hand uh, but JSN also did some stuff that JSN wanted to do this Philavandrel is spicy big big boy it's a big strong girl we love to see it shout out to the muscle mommies we're the crimpid reavers there's only 23% love between Maytol and Gwent. That's bullshit. I call bullshit. We could see some un something uninteractive here, like a nature's rebuke. Okay, so we see the heat wave on, which makes sense on the Adarn. Now maybe we see a nature's rebuke. No reason to give the opponent four points a turn here if you can avoid playing cards. Well, that's the thing. Maytol only has ever has time uh, for the for the Huayfi. No, uh, for their partner. No, no, no time otherwise. Winds blow out the flame. Why well, you see Camelag jam the cards? We see a Insta Kecker. Finds a nice, nice little engine piece here. I mean, that's a lot of points. And there is still conceive. Uh, is there three cards? Three, two. It thins exactly here. I think, if I can math this right. There'll be three cards left in deck. Vernon Roche plays two of them, and then Royal Decree plays one. So my point is, what I'm getting at is that, uh, yeah, Camelek does also still have a round three here, have a decent round three here, especially looking now. This, I mean, JSN's gonna have to play both of these cards, whether Camelek passes or not. Do you go the full Monty here, and do you play Werner Rocher? You do. So yeah, Camelot going for the hard 2-0. Plays 14 points of value on the board. Clicks the Flotsam. So we see the Simless first. Remember 
that of whom you speak? And now we also need a leader charge there, right? It's 15, 16 plus 2. Oh no! Is all we've left. All right. So JSN from Lee Blue Coin tries for a third time to get uh to get symbiosis through and avoid a reverse sweep. JSN no hesitation to take uh mulligans there that could have bricked the tempest, but has the hand you would want. Honestly, I mean, I think this is the hand that you would want, right? Uh, regardless, and I think the players know this matchup, and are gonna this will go fairly quickly here to, at the beginning. The the decision point here, I wonder, is does JSN try to keep the be cheeky and keep the Aquan again, or do you jam the Aquan to, to ensure the round? And we do not see the Aquan on turn two. Interesting. Interesting. This is a pain in the ass if you are JSN, because that floating poison uh, becomes will become a problem here when there's enough coins, which can happen immediately off of a fist tech. Um, so you're always concerned about one turn removal of your shitty shit now getting touchy touched. Long live Gwee Gwee. That is, that is the right attitude. So we see the thinning played on the Sork. I think that's a nice choice because it potentially teases out removal. Yeah, you can't remove everything, so this will go through. This could represent a rebuke on the tax collector. You probably take the backup plan for points. Okay, you take the take the circle of life for carryover. <laughs> Happy Catterday, you filthy animals. Speaking of animals. <laughs> Idiotic picture of my cat. I fucking love it. And we see a confession extractor for carryover. Out comes the boat. The rebuke finally kills the tax collector. Maytol's got jackpot in this one. Anyone, 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 anyone have a difference of opinion on uh, who is whomst is more favored here? I think this jackpot list probably has enough removal. This variation of a jackpot list has enough removal. TBH. But we'll see. So we see the Yuckwin come down and uh, the heat wave the heat wave onto it because there's no the more the most efficient way to probably kill that would have been the Horson's Freak Show, but no no freak show in hand. Fove into Isengrim into Philavandril is a lot of points. Naya Pawn Keeper is not bad now as well. One second chat. Okay, so 
Sorry, chat. Uh, things happened. Uh, Madam got rebuked and ended up being a pawn keeper. Cool, 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 cool. Double pawn keeper for lots of Sumbayusus. H and A comes down. You're gonna you're gonna do what to me? I'm assuming this is the Tempest turn. It is. Love to see it. Getting value in both rows is nice. That shit is nice. Also getting getting to play for positive points without playing into the uh into the slice seductress is nice. Camelek doing some self-poisoning here for the extra puntos. Love the for the extra coins in the bank. Um So without a boost, King of Beggars dies next turn anyway. I suppose you could you lose two points on the fog, but you could always kill the sly. You could jam the simless. At your age, at two centuries, you behave like you were barely wild. I guess it makes sense when you see the self poison. That either means that the opponent has a lot of poisons left in hand, which are not not gonna be great points. Um or uh, or you know that the opponent doesn't have a poison to resolve, right? TLDR, yeah, JSN did all of this to be able to get out Captain Yago, right? So, still some stuff in deck. Not Never finding the Novigrad between round one and two was not great for Kamalek. But, yeah, I mean, y you've... If you're JSN, your deck looks awesome. You swap these two cards and draw three. I mean, you can you take these five cards and, and just rock and roll, right? Very good spot for Nature's Gift here, especially because he didn't need a Heat Wave Candle. Exactly. Sewers remind me of the fjords back home. Is Kamalek gonna get out of this by playing the Salamandra Lackey and keeping the Yago and just candle spending? Does that work? The Salamandra only plays for four? It's 52, and then you have to lead her? So it does all this to save... Save the Yago. So it goes down a card to save the Yago. Does does take the maximum coin carryover that you can have. Keeps the candle on board, but the candle is at five, which can be hard to proc, especially without your leader. But again, does keep the Yago. Then finding the Novigrad is K Tremendo, as late as it is. Um, Horson's Freak Show could be good. I mean, you you take the Mulligan here, yeah. Take the mulligan and you find the royal... I mean, so... Kamalek has the perfect hand that he could have wanted. I'm sure that JSN was hoping for a unit here to play Circle of Life and be uninteractive, if I had to guess. Ops to take the Heat Wave on Novigrad, which is worth the extra three coins, plus whatever came off of the... off of the, the click. Probably, again, doing this to be uninteractive... I would imagine that the the freak show either gets escold or circle of life tier just again to stay non touchy touchy. I suppose you could also fill a and at five fill a should more likely than not get you a um, rebuke. But again, we see the uh, un uninteractivity, the lack of interactivity from JSN. Who's still got this big, hot, wet summer of a 17-point Harold Gordon hand. The Yago is going to get its cheeks clapped, probably, in the end.
So you Eskel the Freak Show? JSN's got some got a choice here. The best thing still left in deck. I, it's not. I mean, I guess it's Saul. Okay, so you jam Gordo, so that you see if the Conjurer's candle gets clicked anywhere. Since this is just a one for one spender, uh, we see the one for one spend on a Horson. And then the Bare Knuckle Brawler for five points because you get to spend the extra coins. So, kind of like maximizing the way that the coins go. You've got a 13 plus four. There's 17 points. So there's enough just with the Esco plus leader here to do the job. Archer, sure. Anything, anything JSN plays here is good enough and JSN uh, figures it out. Sure. Ends up winning by 15. So that that round two bleed, well executed from JSN, and JSN takes game one. I am an adult. And JSN takes uh, game one of the week two Group B matchup uh, on behalf of Team United Kingdom. So great stuff. Nice. Always nice to see when it goes the distance. Um, kind of like shows us that it, in the end, it feels like there's a little more parity than when you do it.